Hello, I'm Kirsten Brundle. And at the beginning of lockdown, I found myself very sorely in need of hope. And on the grounds that children's fiction and those who make it tend to be manufacturers and hunters of hope, I emailed a hundred writers and illustrators asking them to write something that we could put in a book. Not something that would be explicitly about hope, but that would create it, that would be like putting a key in the engine of the human heart and turning it hard. And so they aimed to create hope by anything from uh, notes of the mad astonishments of the real world or heroic tales or disgusting jokes. We are here to tell you about a little poem that we've written for the Book of Hopes and it's called The Hopopotamus and here is a dramatic reading. In a drought, in the dust, in a dry riverbed, a sad hippopotamus hung his grey head. He'd had nothing to drink since the start of this week. If he didn't find water, things could get quite bleak. The hippo was sad and the hippo was hot. But did he sit down and give in? Of course not. Of course not. Never give your axolotl chocolatl in a bottle. Serve it in a tiny egg cup, not too cold and not too hotl. Make him sip it very slowly, not too much, never a lotl. After all, he's just a sleepy, snuggly, bedtime axolotl. If you were a Mercaster girl, like Sonny Hotspur, for instance, you would wear your hair in the Mercaster fashion, high and curly like your own personal cloud. You would shop or chat using Mercaster's special app, which was called Gloom. The armadillo, frightened and alone, curled itself up to a tiny ball and squeezing its eyes tight, hoped with all its heart that it would land somewhere safe and sound and not too far from home. The boy wanted to find a way to the stars. His pals just laughed. In your dreams, they said. But his dad said he would help. They had some food. They had a think. They made a ladder. Up they went. Whoops. And though I'm still an ungainly girl in a brown dress, I feel like a queen. I dance all the way home in my new boots, my beautiful red kid boots. Daphne closed her eyes and took one in her jaws too. She stood in the sun with a little dog, scoffing a donut before dinner. Oh, it was delicious. So perfect, so sweet and warm and soft. Never in the long history of donuts had a donut tasted better. So live your life with the self-belief of a tiny black and white cat, leaping with the conviction she could swap birds from the sky, slay ghosts and scare away tigers. We shuffle closer, watching the lamagayas feed, admiring the majestic birds with their smooth feathered wings rippling dark over golden. They're beautiful, I whisper. Thank you for bringing me all this way to see them. one day meet in a post office. Yes, a post office. And if you're willing to pass the time of day with me, you'll see why. It was incredible really. Food, cuddles, runs, walks, exploration, new smells, long chats, team games, movies with cats in them. Every single sun up. What a time to be alive, Brody thought. Hope Hunter could see people's thoughts. They showed plainly on their faces, changing them completely. When a person had nice thoughts, their faces became radiant and started to physically change. The baby dragon squinted up at the sky where the moon was already out. It was a half moon. The baby dragon huffed. Surely that would be good enough. She did a little hop. There, that was practically flying. She hopped again, and this time spread her wings. But once I looked at it, I knew what I would take home with me, what I take with me everywhere, what I am sending now to you, a smile that will never fade. The idea is that when you read them, you come away feeling a little bit tougher, a little bit braver, a little bit more ready to face 
our chaotic, beautiful, terrifying, spinning world. The Book of Hopes.